Hello everyone, this is a short video on how to do basic health checks for your hatchling leopard tortoise. A number of the checks that I'll be going through are also relevant to other hatchling tortoises. The basic checks that I'll be covering are eating, drinking, eyes, nares or nostrils, beak or mouth, tongue, ears, breathing, limbs, nails, swellings, shell, poo and wee, weight and other behaviours like basking and sleeping. Other topics that I'll briefly cover are good husbandry, pyramiding and salmonella. So the first check is eating. Some tend to eat a little in the morning and then again in the late afternoon, whilst others will graze most of the day. So you'll need to get to know your tortoise's normal eating habits. If your tortoise has stopped eating, then check the temperatures are within the correct ranges as they tend to eat once they've warmed up under the basking lamp. But if they're too cold or are poorly, then they will stop eating or not eat as much. If they haven't eaten for a few days, then you'll need to take your tortoise to your vet. The next slide is a reminder of the recommended temperatures for your hatchling leopard tortoise. For those of you that have watched my other videos, you'll be familiar with this slide. But for those of you that haven't seen this slide already, then the recommended temperatures for your leopard tortoise are daytime between 24 to 28 degrees C, basking area temperatures between 30 and 32 degrees C, and nighttime temperatures around 22 degrees C, but they should never go below 20 degrees C as leopard tortoises are particularly sensitive to incorrect temperatures and getting this wrong could be fatal for your tortoise. The next health check we'll be talking about is drinking. When your tortoise drinks, it will either dip its head into the water, like you can see in this video, or it may stick its head completely under the water for a few seconds to drink. So don't be alarmed if you do see that as your hatchling isn't trying to drown itself, it's simply drinking water. And if you watch closely, you'll be able to see its neck moving as it drinks, like you can see here. It's really important to keep your hatchling hydrated by giving it access to clean, fresh water in its tortoise table, as well as giving it regular baths, as this will reduce the risk of bladder stones as well as dehydration, which could be fatal for your tortoise. I do have another video on bathing your tortoise if you want more information on this. The next health check we'll be covering is eyes. What we're looking for here is the eyes should be nice and bright, like you can see in this picture. And when their eyes are open, their eyelids shouldn't be puffy at all. If you do notice that they have puffy, swollen or any discharge in their eyes, or they have trouble opening their eyes, then this could indicate a health problem and you should contact your vet straight away. The next health check is the nares or nostrils. There's a couple of things that we're looking for here. The first being that there are no food particles like grass that are stuck up the nares or nostrils. If you do find that there's anything like that, then it should be removed immediately by pulling it out with your fingertips, or you can use tweezers, or you can wipe this away with a damp piece of kitchen towel, but be really careful not to push this further into the nostril. If you can't remove the item safely, then you should take your hatchling to your vets immediately for them to do this for you. The second thing you need to check for is that there's no discharge from the nares. If you do see any bubbles or fluid that's coming out of the nostrils, then this could indicate health problems like runny nose syndrome or pneumonia, and you'll need to contact your vet straight away. The next health check that I'll be going through is the beak or mouth of your tortoise. One of the things that we need to check here is that the beak isn't overgrown. This is where the top part of the beak overhangs the bottom part, like you can see in this picture. And as a comparison, this is a hatchling that doesn't have an overgrown beak. If, however, you do notice that your tortoise has an overgrown beak, then this can normally be resolved without a trip to the vets by making sure you place your tortoise's food on a hard surface, for example, a terracotta saucer or a piece of slate, so that they can naturally wear down their beaks as they eat. But if you do notice that your hatchling is having trouble eating, then your vet can trim your tortoise's beak for you. Another check relating to the beak or mouth is to make sure that they're not blowing any bubbles out of their mouth. 
Your hatchling may sometimes blow the odd bubble straight after putting the heads under water to drink, but if there's more than a couple of bubbles, or they do this when they're eating, then this could be a problem, and I recommend a visit to your vets just to make sure there's nothing sinister going on. The next health check that we're going to cover is the tongue. What we're looking for here is a nice pink tongue. You can open your tortoise's mouth to check the tongue, but I'd only recommend doing this if you're an experienced owner, as you could potentially damage their ears and eyes if you do it wrong. Another way to check their tongue is when they're eating, as they open their mouths quite wide and then you can normally have a quick look into their mouth at that point. So as I say, you're looking for a nice pink tongue. If you do see a yellow tongue and it's not nice and pink, then this could be a sign of microplasma or herpes. So you'll need to get your tortoise to your vets to get them to check this out. The next health check is the ears. The ears of the tortoise are just behind the eyes, marked here in the picture. What we're looking for here is that they're flat against the tortoise's head. So if you notice any lumps, swellings or abscesses in this area, then you'll need to contact your vet as your tortoise may need treatment. The next health check that we'll be covering is to make sure their breathing is normal. So normal breathing is when the front legs and sometimes the back legs of your tortoise move in and out like you can see in this picture. And also when your tortoise breathes, their throat will move as well. You can also see that here. When they're sleeping, you may hardly notice any movement at all. And when they're scared, you may notice they breathe more rapidly. If you notice that your tortoise is making strange breathing noises, like wheezing, gurgling, coughing, or groaning sounds, then you'll need to take your tortoise to your vets immediately as this could indicate respiratory or other health problems. The next health check we're going to go through is the limbs. What we're looking for here is that your tortoise is walking around normally and not dragging its legs or not using one of its legs properly, as this may indicate an injury. Injuries like this can be avoided by removing any objects that your tortoise may climb up or fall off from in their tortoise table and also making sure that there's no sharp edges to any of the objects in their table. When your tortoise walks, their shell should be raised off the ground with a little gap underneath, and they should be supporting their shell with their legs directly under their shell and not splayed out to the side or dragging their body along. You can also gently feel the legs and knees of your tortoise to make sure they feel normal. That's if they let you, because they'll probably hide their front legs and back legs into their shell as soon as you pick them up. If your tortoise isn't walking around as I've described and appears to be lame, then I recommend you get your tortoise to your vet straight away. The next health check we're going to talk about is nails. If you're feeding your tortoise on a hard surface, as I've mentioned previously, then the nails will naturally wear down and you won't need to trim their nails. It's a good idea to also include different textures or hard surfaces in your tortoise table. For example, pebbles or small rocks, providing they're not sharp so that your tortoise can wear down its nails as it walks over these objects. There's no need to trim down the nails if you've got the hard surfaces that I've mentioned, but if you do need to get the nails trimmed, then again speak to your vet, who will either trim the tortoise's nails for you, or they can show you how to do this. The next health check is swellings. If you do notice any unusual swellings anywhere on your tortoise, then please take your tortoise to your vet immediately. The next health check is the shell. What we're looking for here is that there's no damage to the shell. So you'll need to check that there's no scoots that are lifted up. The scoots are the part of the shell that looks like patchwork pieces. You'll also need to check that there's no scoots broken off, that there's no damage or any dents in the shell. And you'll also need to check there's no weeping areas on the shell and also that there's no shell rot. Shell rot is where the bits of the shell looks like it's rotting away. Another check to do is to make sure the shell is hard. To do this, you can gently squeeze or prod the shell and it should feel fairly hard. It's worth mentioning that when the babies have just hatched, they will have soft pliable shells, but these will start to harden up after a couple of months and should be completely hard after say six to 12 months. If you do notice that your tortoise's shell is pliable or feels soft when you gently squeeze it, then check you're giving them a high fibre diet and also that they have plenty of calcium sprinkled on their food. 
You can also give them extra calcium by putting cuttlefish in their enclosure for them to nibble on. Also, check that your UVB bulb isn't older than 6 to 12 months as the quality of the UVB starts to degrade after 6 months and there's little or no UVB left at all after 12 months. Never attach anything to their shell as they can feel it and it's very sensitive for them. Also, only put warm water on their shell and never put anything like oils or creams unless it's given to you by the vet as we don't want to clog up the pores of the shell. If there's any dirt, food debris or poo on the shell, then you can clean this off with warm water and an unused toothbrush. The shell checks that I've mentioned apply to both the top of the shell, the carapace, and the underneath, the plastron. Any signs that your tortoise's shell has been damaged by any of the things that I've mentioned before, or by an animal or an accident, then I recommend you take your tortoise to your vets immediately so your tortoise doesn't suffer any longer. The next thing we're going to talk about is faeces or poo. Your hatchling will probably poop when it's in the bath or immediately after their bath as the warm water tends to stimulate this. Your tortoise's poo should be solid or firm and not runny. If it is runny or has any undigested food in it then it could be that the food that you're giving them isn't high enough in fibre. You can check out my video on what to feed your hatchling tortoise if you want more information on this. Also, another reason for runny poo, or changes to what your tortoise's poo normally looks like, could indicate worms or parasites, and this will need to be checked by giving a poo sample to your vet to test. Another reason for diarrhoea is if you're feeding your leopard tortoise fruit. Fruit isn't recommended for leopard tortoises, as they wouldn't normally encounter much fruit in the wild, and this could cause gut problems and diarrhoea. If your tortoise appears to be straining when it's trying to poo, or hasn't pooed for a few days, then you'll need to increase how often and how long you bath your tortoise for until it has improved. If it hasn't improved after a few days, then you'll need to take it to your vet so your vet can check that there's no obstruction in the intestines. If there appears to be blood in their poo, then you'll need to take your tortoise to your vet straight away with a fresh poo sample ideally. Also, if you see worms in their stools or poo, then your tortoise will need to be wormed and you can either take your tortoise to your vet for worming or you can buy worming tablets or powder for your tortoise from pet shops. Whilst we're on the subject of faeces or poo, you'll also need to check the cloaca, which is the opening in the tail of your tortoise, just to make sure there's no runny discharge there as this could also indicate health problems. The next health check that we're going to talk about is urine or wee. Your tortoise will wee anywhere and any time, but normally when it's about to drink or after drinking. Also, sometimes when it's scared it will wee, as most tortoises don't really like being handled. So if you pick your tortoise up, then it may wee on you in fright. This is another reason for them to have access to fresh, clean water at all times, so they can keep hydrated. Some breeds of tortoises may produce a white substance in their wee called urates, which is concentrated uric acid. However, I've never seen any urates in any of my leopard tortoises' wee, but I thought I should mention it for those of you who are using these health checks for other breeds of tortoises that do produce urates. So if you do have a breed of tortoise that produces urates, then what we need to check for is what it looks like and how often it's produced. If it's been passed more than a couple of times a week, then this could indicate dietary problems, for example, too much protein and not enough fibre in their diet. If it looks completely liquid or it's a toothpaste consistency then this is perfect and just what we're looking for. However if it looks hard, gritty or powdery then this indicates dehydration. This can be fatal so you'd need to bath your tortoise immediately and continue to do this every day until the white substance has returned to normal so it's either liquid or it looks like toothpaste. If your tortoise's wee has any blood in it or you have any other concerns at all then you'll need to contact your vet immediately. The next health check we'll cover is your tortoise's weight. It's advisable to weigh your hatchling each week and make a note of their weight. This way you'll be able to see if there's any significant or unusual weight gain or weight losses for your tortoise. You can then make changes to the quantity of the food that you give to your tortoise so that it's healthy and not overfed. And after a while of weighing your tortoise, you'll see what weight gain is typical or expected for your particular tortoise, and you'll know if there's anything that doesn't seem right. 
I do have another video on weighing and measuring your tortoise if you want more information on this. If you're at all concerned about your tortoise's weight loss or weight gain, then seek advice from your vet. Next I'll be covering what is the normal behaviour for your hatchling tortoise. Each hatchling is different, but what you can typically expect from a hatchling during the day is for them to spend a lot of time hidden away, as in the wild they would hide away from predators to feel safe. They will come out under the basking lamp, their sunshine, to warm up and may have a snooze. Then they'll probably eat a little. Then they'll hide away again, or go back to the basking lamp to warm up, or go and have another doze. They will also wander around their enclosure, looking for food to graze on or to find water. They will spend quite a bit of their day sleeping. Then they'll repeat the process again, so hiding, eating, drinking, sleeping, basking and wandering around. When your hatchling is moving into the warmer areas, like under the basking lamp, and then out to the cooler areas of their enclosure, they're doing what is called thermoregulation, and it's their natural behaviour that's required so your hatchling can warm up and cool down as needed. Your tortoise will know whether it needs to warm up or cool down or go to its humid hide area, so just let them find the areas they want to go to by themselves and avoid picking up your tortoise and placing it in different areas of the tortoise table. And at night time, they sleep. Some may scrape away the soil or substrate to nestle down before sleeping all night. Your tortoise may sleep with its head pulled right into its shell, or they may stretch their head out and rest it onto the soil or other objects that are close by. So we've covered what the normal behaviour is for your hatchling. Now we go through what the unusual behaviour is and things that may be cause for concern. If your tortoise spends all of its time under the heat lamp or spends all of its time hidden away in the cooler area of the tortoise table, then this could indicate health problems or that your temperatures may need adjusting. So it's worth checking the temperatures are in the correct ranges as I've described previously. If you do find that the temperatures are too cold at night in your tortoise table, then you can either add a thermostatically controlled heater into the room where your tortoise is or you can add a thermostatically controlled ceramic bulb heater into your tortoise table. The ceramic bulb must be a nighttime one that doesn't give off any light. This is so we can mimic what they have in the wild, which is dark at night time and bright and sunny during the day. Next we'll cover good husbandry. A number of different health issues can be avoided with good husbandry, and all this means is looking after your tortoise well and your tortoise's environment well so that they're healthy and happy. For example, cleaning the poo and wee from the enclosure every day, giving them fresh, clean food and water every day, cleaning their food and water dishes and disinfecting those daily, disinfecting any surfaces and the tortoise table regularly. I do have another video on the tortoise safe disinfectant that I use if you want more information on this, and also changing the soil or substrate frequently. Next I'll be covering pyramiding or metabolic bone disease. Pyramiding is when the scutes are deformed and look like small pyramids and this isn't good for your tortoise because it causes poor bone density or softening and badly formed bones. This is a photo of an adult female leopard tortoise that I've got called Tallulah and she had pyramiding on her shell when I got her. Unfortunately it is permanent and the pyramiding will never go away but now that I've got her on the correct diet and in the correct environment and also following good husbandry rules, hopefully I've stopped it in its tracks and it won't get any worse. And this is Tank, he's an adult male leopard tortoise and as you can see he has very little signs of pyramiding as his shell is nice and smooth. And as a comparison, this is a hatchling leopard tortoise that doesn't have any pyramiding and as you can see it's got a nice smooth shell. There are a number of reasons why pyramiding can occur one of them being diet, this should be high in fibre and low in protein. So if you're giving them too much protein and not enough fibre, then this will cause pyramiding. Another reason is quick growth rate. So if you're feeding too much food, especially if it's high in protein, then this could be another reason for pyramiding. You can check out my video on what to feed your hatchling leopard tortoise for more information on how much to feed and how often to feed your tortoise. Another thing that could cause pyramiding is not enough calcium in their diet. 
so make sure their food is sprinkled with calcium or calci dust and also put a piece of cuttlefish in their enclosure so they can nibble on this if they need to. Another reason for pyramiding is if they don't have enough vitamin D or sunshine. Your tortoise will get their vitamin D from the UVB basking lamp or when you put them outside in the sunshine on warm days. One way to make sure that your tortoise is getting enough vitamin D when it's in its tortoise table is to change the UVB basking bulbs every 6 to 12 months. You can't actually see the UVB in the basking bulb, but one way you could check it is with a UVB card or with a UVB stick. Unfortunately this doesn't show how much UVB is left, it just shows that there's some UVB that's being emitted. But this could be too weak for your tortoise and they may not benefit from how little is left. So therefore I'd recommend getting into the habit of changing your UVB bulbs every 6 to 12 months. Another reason for pyramiding is the level of humidity in your tortoise's enclosure. Some studies have shown that by creating a humid hide area for your hatchling will help prevent pyramiding. So to create a humid hide area for your hatchling all you need is a half log and then you can put some damp sphagnum moss underneath it. Then your hatchling can easily move in or out of the humid hide when it feels it needs to. Pyramiding can also be caused by internal organ diseases. If you're doing everything you can to avoid pyramiding and you do notice that your tortoise is showing signs of pyramiding, then you'll need to seek the advice from your vet just to make sure there's no underlying health issues. So I've given you an overview of pyramiding and what causes it. And as you can appreciate, this is quite a big subject and I won't go into any more detail on this. But if you do want to know more about this topic, then you can have a look on the internet or in tortoise books, as there's plenty of information out there. Next, we're going to briefly talk about Salmonella. All tortoises are possible carriers of Salmonella, but if you follow the good hygiene rules, then this will protect you, your family and your friends from getting this disease from your tortoise. The hygiene rules are always wash your hands after handling your tortoise, their food and water bowls or anything at all in their tortoise table. Any surfaces that your tortoise touches could potentially spread the disease, so never let your tortoise roam freely around your house. Avoid using food preparation areas or kitchen sinks for bathing your tortoise or for washing their food and water bowls. And last but not least, Always clean thoroughly and disinfect any surfaces that your tortoise or items from your tortoise table may have come in contact with. The last point I want to go through is what type of vet you need to be registered with. It's very important to make sure the vet that you choose is a reptile specialist. This is because leopard tortoises and other tortoises are classed as exotic pets and need to have a specialist to treat them. So even if you have other pets and use a particular vet or surgery, then you may need to register your tortoise with a different practice that do have these reptile specialists. If you need help finding a reptile specialist vet, then I recommend getting in contact with a tortoise group in your area. The health checks that I've been through are by no means exhaustive, but hopefully it's given you an idea on the basic health checks you can do and has also explained what's normal behaviour and what would need advice from your vet. And a final note, each tortoise will behave differently, so you'll need to get to know your tortoise and what its normal behaviour is. If you have any concerns at all, or you notice any changes in your tortoise's behaviour or health, then you need to contact your vet immediately. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed the video and found it useful, then please click the thumbs up and also subscribe to see my other videos.